Welcome back to Living the Wiccan Life. In part two of our episode, we interview Kirk White, founder of Cherry Hill Seminary. Hello, this is Reverend Don Lewis, and we're still at PantheaCon. And uh, we're here with Kirk White, the founder of Cherry Hill Academy. And um, we will be talking to Kirk. Hello, Kirk. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. And you're surviving the great room hunt for a place to film this interview. Which I am. I'm getting my exercise. It's been quite pleasant. This is about the fourth or fifth place that we, we have uh, set up to interview. Mm -hmm. But this time it's going to work. So, Kirk. Yes. Uh, you, you're the founder and the head of Cherry Hill Seminary, yes? Uh, I'm the founder. Or the founder. Um, uh, I am founder and president emeritus. Okay. Um, we do have a board of directors that oversees it, and there's um, an executive director, uh, Holly Emore, who's who okay. just recently took the position and, and is, is uh, handling the day-to-day -day operations. Okay. So. And um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what Cherry Hill is for those of our viewers who may not be familiar with it? Sure. Cherry Hill Seminary is a, um, a professional pagan ministry training program uh, that is designed to train people in those skills that are above and beyond the skills necessary to run a coven or a grove or a small group dynamic, but rather uh, to that go beyond and, and interface more with the dominant culture. Uh, one of the <coughs> things we early on uh, made a distinction of in Cherry Hill Seminary is, mm -hmm. is there's a difference between priestesshood and ministry. And mm -hmm. priestesshood is that thing that you, that you learn in your tradition or that you get from your gods. A priestess only uh, is accountable to her, her gods and her whatever tradition she is and there's no higher calling no higher um, degree or anything like that than whatever it is your tradition says makes you a priestess um, and within people's priestesshood uh, people are called to serve the, their gods in particular ways some people are called to do so through ritual some people are served through teaching some through through music or dance or arts or other expressions and um, just as that is the case, some people are called in their priestesshood to serve the gods through, uh, through this interface, uh, interfacing with the dominant culture, through ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, and that includes pastoral counseling, public relations work, uh, interfaith work, chaplaincy work, um, uh, doing uh, public rituals that may or may not include p the pagan public, mm -hmm. um, you know, those kind of things. And, um, and it occurred to us that just like the person who serves the goddess through music uh, probably took music lessons if they ha were having, going to have a serious professional orientation to it, so should we also for people who are going to be doing ministry. And particularly, especially when you get into those things like pastoral counseling, where it really is not a place that we should be learning through trial and error. Mm -hmm. uh, my ethical statement says that you should do no harm, and uh, and if we're learning uh, how to do funerals by making mistakes at people's funerals, or by making mistakes learning on the job doing pastoral counseling, uh, doing poor public relations work, and casting a bad image on paganism across the country, mm -hmm. uh, then then we've done a disservice to to ourselves, and um, and that's not acceptable. And so the seminary was uh, created to to fill that gap that existed in that realm. And um, we were talking a little bit earlier about what led you to found the seminary. Mm -hmm. And um, you, had, you had some very interesting things to say about that. Yeah, well, back in the early 80s, um, you know, I was uh, very interested in, in, in doing ministry work. I'd been you know, doing a, you know, priest work and stuff like that. I'd been running covens for quite a while, and I was, I want to be, I'll be a minister. And, uh, and and I looked all over the country, mm -hmm. and, and I, there weren't any programs in place. And I, I talked to uh, Amber Kay mm -hmm. at that time. She was entertaining the idea of creating a seminary, and uh, she promised she'd get back to me as soon as she had something. And um, <clears throat> and so I looked at a variety of different options, and 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 really didn't find anything. And so, like most, I think, pagans who've been in the in the the field for a certain length of time. Uh, we, we sort of uh, bootstrapped ourselves up, you know. We, mm -hmm. we went and we, we got what the training we couldn't find in all one place. We got it here and there and everywhere. And, and I did likewise. And, and uh, I got a master's degree in counseling and, and, um, and did a lot of uh, administrative work and, and ultimately uh, was uh, a founding president uh, of a small acupuncture college. Um, and, 
and one day um, I was I was complaining about how there still weren't any good pagan seminaries out there, you know, that I could go to when it occurred to me that I had already acquired the skills to create the thing that I was wishing for. And and um, and so it, it occurred to me that, that that was the message from the gods, that that was my job to do it. And, um, and Don't you love it when you get that message? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and so so that's what we did. And, and I uh, spoke to a few uh, pagans I knew, and uh, particularly people who knew stuff that I didn't know, mm-hmm. and uh, um, and we we uh, took off from there. And uh, certainly, th- the first batch of people who were the most enthusiastic, in fact, were the other instructors because we've all bootstrapped ourselves up. And as we did, you know, you know, I'm stronger in this, but she's stronger in that, and and we realized that that it's through our collectivity. Uh, that that we can exchange this information and 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 in general raise the caliber of of ministry in the in the pagan community. Um, you have a great many well known teachers at Cherry Hill, um, and uh, I was wondering if you could maybe speak about some of the personalities, some of the people who are involved in your programs. Uh, certainly, uh, we have um, we have two department chairs who are. are Quite well known. We have uh, Judy Harrow, uh, who's uh, written a number of, of popular books, uh, Wicca Covens, and, and, and a number of others. And um, <coughs> and uh, Judy has has been very active in the uh, counseling uh, profession and, and uh, at um, you know at the American Counseling Association and those kind of things. Uh, and she's been doing a lot of work with the uh, American Association of Professional Counselors, those kind of things. Um, uh, within her department, she, we have uh, Dr. Drake Spaeth, uh, who's a, a professor um, at some university, I cannot recall. Uh, most of our faculty are uh, terminal degree uh, mm. faculty, uh, so in those fields where there, where there is a doctoral degree, mm. they have it, um, but you know, ritual design, there aren't any doctoral degrees mm. in, so you just find the person who's the best at it. Um, and. Um, uh, Maka Nightmare is uh, chair of our uh, public ministry department, mm-hmm. and uh, <clears throat> and she's been doing a, a tremendous job at that. W- underneath her, in in her department, she has uh, a number of of uh, well known people. Probably at, right at the moment, the most uh, well known in the media right now is Patrick McCullum, uh, who's been doing a lot of work around the Pentacle Quest and around uh, prison chaplaincy, that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Uh, we have just um, created a, a um, chaplaincy program uh, department uh, in, in under the public ministry, and, and Patrick is the chair for that, uh, which is which is very. Uh, we're we're tremendously honored to have him as part of our faculty, in part because he is the person who is the spear spearheading that whole movement. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it comes down to it, uh, when I mean there are no standards at this point. For prison chaplains in this country, and mm-hmm. and the the uh, uh, various governmental bodies are saying what are the standards, and the person they're asking is Patrick, and so so we're pretty lucky to have Patrick on our faculty because well, yes, indeed. Um, um, but um, but we have Patrick, we have um, Michael York, um, um, now a semi-retired professor from the University of Bath, England. Um, we I'm trying to remember them all. We have. Uh, uh, quite a selection of people who are, are like I said, um, most many of them are faculty members at well-known colleges and universities around the country. Well, let me ask you, um, in your teaching, mm-hmm. uh, is this done, um, I believe you have a major online component. Mm-hmm. Um, how would people go about studying with Cherry Hill? Well, uh, our program is designed to be a uh, distance learning program, mm-hmm. uh, low residency. Um, so uh, the vast majority of the coursework is done online. Um, the, uh, but we do require periodic intensives. Mm-hmm. Um, we just had one of those intensives uh, yesterday here um, in, in preceding Pentheacon. I figured people, faculty and students were going to be here anyway. Might as well just have them come a day early. Um, and it does rotate. Uh, currently mm-hmm. it's rotating uh, the uh, winter Intensive is on the west coast, and the summer intensive is on the east coast. Um, and that's because we have uh, faculty and students that are spread across uh, uh, North America, and um, and so uh, so we try to be fair and balanced about that. Mm-hmm. 
but uh, but that's the the main part of it. Most of it, most of the actual coursework is online. What um, what are you hoping to see for the future with Cherry Hill that um, you're hoping to do that maybe hasn't been done yet? Um, well, I mean, I think in general, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Cherry Hill is trying to is trying to fill a niche that hasn't been met. There mm -hmm. are a number of schools out there that are teaching people how to mm -hmm. to do their faith, uh, how to how to be pagans, um, mm -hmm. and and there's a real need for that. Uh, Cherry Hill doesn't choose to take that route. Uh, to put it into the uh, model of uh, kind of conventional educational models, mm -hmm. you would think of people learning to do their faith as being uh, sort of a baccalaureate level. Mm -hmm. And we're <coughs> definitely striving at master's level, um, um, which has never been done before in this country mm -hmm. and and is, is a real challenge for us. Um, one of the things that we're always trying to work out is is how do you how do you balance the needs of the dominant culture with with mm -hmm. the unique values and qualities of the pagan community? Uh, because if we just adopt the models of the dominant culture, if we just copy their educational models, if we just mm -hmm. um, I, I went to a workshop once and, and a guy laid out. He said, "This is a curriculum for a, a pagan college. I want to start a seminary, and it had you know had pagan homiletics." And, and and you know homiletics are are you know are doing sermons, and and uh, and I thought you know I don't want us to become mm -hmm. one of that. And, and uh, if we aren't careful, if we just copy the dominant model, which is so easy because it's natural to us to do, mm -hmm. uh, if we just copy that, then then uh, the form will ultimately affect the function, and we will become more like they are. We'll mm -hmm. develop edifice complexes where we where we have to have buildings. Uh, not to say buildings are bad, but but mm -hmm. you know that to have them, uh, you know, and and if we aren't careful, we'll turn into the big white circle on Main Street where all the pews <laughs> face forward, and and we don't want to do that. I no. don't believe. I believe we would be uh, losing uh, unique features of of our. Of our spiritual tradition, so so the seminary is is always trying to walk that line, and that's the hard thing. Uh, even just mm -hmm. calling it a seminary, uh, you know, seminary comes from semen, which has to do with male, and, and you know, and, and it's but, hard, hard to hard to get anyone to uh, to go with the ovulary. Though. That's it, exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, and the government agencies would recognize. Well, that's it. what that's who I mean. Yeah, and when you're trying to try and get that proof, you know. We, we've found that you have to use the words they know. Exactly. Uh, or they will not listen to you. That's right. And, and that's why, too, uh, pastoral counseling implies a pastor, which implies sheep and shepherds, mm -hmm. and, uh, and which we also don't think fits us well. But that is the normative language. Mm -hmm. And so, so for us, uh, it's always a balance between, between trying to, to meet the unique needs of the pagan community without selling out. And... Mm -hmm. um, uh, and trying to do that, and um, uh, so that's the big thing. It, it, otherwise, you know, I mean, the, the next thing that's probably going to be uh, unfolded from the seminary is a program on interfaith mm -hmm. uh, work. Um, there are some amazing interfaith uh, people in the community. Um, uh, Angie Buchanan, um, Don Frew, Rowan Fairgrove, uh, who, um, who None of them are currently faculty at the seminary, <laughs> but we're hoping to get them. Uh, we, we try real hard to get people who are faculty who aren't just people who write books, mm -hmm. uh, but who are people who are actually doing the work on the ground. Um, well, there's a tremendous difference between writing the book and doing the work. And so that's what we're doing. Uh, you know, I think down the road there's a, there's a dream for, for bricks and mortar, at least a, mm -hmm. a, a something. Uh, but uh, but really, at this point, um, you know, we're we're going with with this model. Um, we are uh, also the goal is to be uh, degree granting and accredited, mm -hmm. and we're working with um, a number of the other um, schools about talking about the idea of creating an association of pagan schools, which is the mm -hmm. very first step in the process of creating an accrediting body, which accredits. Yeah, that's a long. Uh, drawn out process. We're looking into other, all those kind of things, and uh, um, it'll be a journey. Um, mm, it but, will. <laughs> but uh, but you know, it's uh, it's certainly my passion, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Wonderful. Uh, are you planning to go to the Parliament of World's Religions in uh, next year in Australia? I would love to if I can uh, 
swing the finances. Uh, you know, it, will, it will be a wonderful interfaith uh, event. Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, um, and I wouldn't be surprised if we don't have some representatives there. I'm mm -hmm. not sure if I'm going to make it, but we'll see. Well, hopefully you will. Yeah. Uh, if people would like to find out more about Cherry Hill, or perhaps look into the possibility of, of becoming a student there, mm -hmm. where will they find more information? They'll find it at www.cherryhillseminary.org. Wonderful. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was worth going through all those rooms. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. I hope that you enjoyed our interview with Kirk White, and that you'll join us again next week for more fascinating interviews. Until then, may you blessed be. Hello, this is Reverend Don Lewis, and I'm very pleased to announce the publication in paperback of Witch School's Lessons for the First Degree, available now for pre-order from witchschool.com and coming soon to a bookstore near you together with Lessons for the Second Degree and Lessons for the Third Degree.